Welcome to the Pop Art Hunter channel, and today we're going to be discussing how do I preserve my cells? Should I, I don't know, should I frame them? Should I not frame them? Should I be sticking them in a box and putting them in a closet? Do I store them vertically or horizontally? There's all sorts of different tips and tricks that we're going to be chatting about today. Now, this is one of those videos that's a enter at your own risk. It's try these things if you want. Um, you know, I'm not going to be held responsible for if something gets destroyed or damaged. I'm going to give you the things that I know about cell preservation and how I display my particular uh, piece of artwork. Maybe I'll learn something. Maybe in the comments you'll tell me that's the wrong way of doing it. You're going to ruin all your prints and then I'll learn something and I can fix things. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to tell you the things that I learned. Um, but again, make sure that you understand that I'm not a conservationist. I'm not a historian that's working in an archivist lab and, and doing things with chemicals and temperature controlled vaults, uh, you know, doing the best I can with my particular collection. And that's what I think a lot of us are doing. You know, we might have budget constraints where we're not able to say, um, you know, definitively that we can pay a thousand dollars per print to preserve in a particular way. Uh, we might not have, again, the facilities to do it for temperature controlled and those types of things. Um, and also, you know, some of the things that are done are not only done for cost effective reasons, but storage reasons and other limitations that you might have. So you have to do the best you can with what you have. And as we've talked about before, sometimes finding a bunch of prints in a moldy box somewhere is, is, is a tragedy of itself, but leaving them in that box, even if you put them in a, a nice frame in a way that's better. I feel like that's a step forward in preserving that history. Um, it might not be going directly to the temperature controlled vault, but it's taking an intermediate step in the right direction. So doing the best you can, I think, is is good enough. Um, clearly, if you find out that there's something that you can do a little differently that's cost effective and that you can handle, for sure do that. Um, and at some point, you might decide in your collection, like this type of print, nitrate. I won't touch nitrate. I I don't like spontaneous combustion. I don't like to worry about the chemicals and the temperature control and the uh, interactions. I, I don't care about that. So for me, that, that's a that's a no sale. I'm not going to worry about nitrate um, and I'm not going to get into that collecting. And, and that was the decision I made because it's for me, that would be too expensive and too much of a hassle to work with. Um, some of the other uh, cells that I collect or drawings, you know, they're a little bit easier to maintain. They still have some, you know, sort of perks and limitations uh, to doing that. Um, but I think they're managed. If I find something, if you guys comment and you say, hey, I'm doing it all wrong, I'm more than happy to change things up and adjust things. Uh, but this is what I know and how I do things, and I hope that it helps you out um, in your collecting. Again, do it at your own risk, but I feel as though these are some techniques that you could employ. Now, um, one of the things I hear a lot is, well, you know, I, I don't really want to... I don't really want to display my prints. I want to store my prints. And if you're going to store your prints, um, that's that's one thing. One, I think you should consider your collection as a whole because there are some things that I have stored. Um, I have sort of a rotating collection and I'll show you some of the techniques I use to make sure that that is easy, that I can rotate things out on a regular basis. Um, but if you're not going to be rotating out your collection, you have a ton of stuff in storage. The question is, is, is it deteriorating? Is it something that you really want in your collection? Uh, because this might be something that you know, if it's sitting in a closet, taking up space, collecting dust, uh, you know, maybe getting damaged, is it really worth having that? You might lose out on your investment. You're not getting that warm and fuzzy feeling of the nostalgia of it, and you're not really preserving it either. And so um, that's something to take a close look at. If you're storing a ton of stuff, if you're running out of the space and you end up just shoving it all in a closet, that's, in my opinion, not the best thing to do. If you have to do that, one of the things to do is to make sure that you store things um, in a way that's safe. One, uh, I, I recommend storing things vertically uh, instead of horizontally. Um, if you're storing things horizontally, stacking cells on top of one another, um, the paint you know can stick to the other cells, it can stick to paper, it can get compressed, it can get chipping and cracking because you're putting pressure and weight on it. If you store it vertically, um, that's a way that you can kind of prevent that. Now, if you're storing it vertically, you also want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's secure. It's properly, uh, you know, has, has you know some cardboard or some support on it. Um, the proper cardboard, acid-free, you know, rag mat, museum quality, things of that nature. We'll get into that. Uh, but make sure that you're storing it in a way that it has some support and isn't going to buckle or curl and things like that. Um, so that that's something to consider. Um, also, I personally like to have all of my stuff framed. I have very few pieces that are not in a frame that I have framed myself. Um, and that is because I like to store them, but I also want to rotate them back into my collection. And I feel that framing them gives them a really good chance of a professional storage. It puts some support on them. 
and make sure that they're not touching each other. It's using archival materials if possible, and I recommend that, though cost effectiveness, you might not be able to do that right away. Uh, you can always start out with starting and then replacing mats and replacing things of that nature as you go along. Um, but there's some pretty cost effective things that we'll talk about today that I think that you should be able to to work with. So I like to store them in frames, though, because one, you can store them horizontally if you need. If it's a space restriction, you can restore them. Uh, you can store them vertically, but then you're also able to switch them out. So all these prints on my wall back here, I can say, you know what? I don't want this one here today. Take it off, put a different one on, and it's going to be easy and quick, and it's going to be able to display different things. So it might be seasonally, where maybe during the holiday season, I want to display holiday prints, things from you know cartoons when I was a kid, or the How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or something like that. I can display different things, uh, or um, you know I can switch them out for a particular reason because maybe I'm selling a certain piece, or maybe I have someone who's interested, and I'm going to take off the wall temporarily to see if they're interested. I put some other stuff to display in my home, and sometimes it's just because I want. A different view of things and and that's the nice thing about having a collection i don't want things sitting in a shoe box collecting dust and getting damaged um and so i like to rotate those things out and it gives me something new to look at and it's almost like <laughs> finding the treasure all over again I'm, I'm a pop art hunter so when i hunt for the art and i find it it gives me that warm fuzzy feeling inside and once i have put something on the wall you know, it, it's there for a while. You kind of forget about it. You pass by, you don't look at it anymore. And then the things that you put in your closet, uh, you don't necessarily remember that they're there. And so going through the closet every once in a while, it's like buying it, purchasing it, and finding it all over again. And you get to experience that way. So one of the things I recommend um, with framing and if you're collecting certain types of art, usually people fall into certain categories. Um, a lot of people collect 12 field cells instead of 16 field cells. Some people have both. Um, I have both in my collection, but if you have a lot of 12 field cells and you're collecting all of those things together, it might be worth looking at buying the same type of frame for everything. And so the frames that I use in my collection, if I'm doing a 12 field cell, um, I will actually buy the same frame over and over. And these frames right here um, are 13 by 19 uh, frames 13 inch by 19 inch frames and that might seem like an odd size for you and it kind of is um i collected a bunch of 13 by 19 art prints um and i still have those and i display them vertically and when i had those frames i ended up having a couple left and when i first started collecting the art um from animation i i didn't have a, a ton of money i wasn't trying to frame things i was still learning things and so i used a lot of the excess 13 by 19 frames because i didn't have to purchase frames because frames can get expensive depending on what you get so i buy some economy frames sometimes if you buy frames of the same size and quality you can get them for a bulk discount so if you're ordering 20 30 40 frames at a time i know that seems like a lot but you can get a severe discount on that and that can set you up for years to come um, or months to come or days to come depending on how much you spend and how much you uh, collect animation art. but it can set you up at a discount and so for these i'm able to take them off the wall i use 3m strips you don't want to damage the wall you don't want to damage the frames you use uh those uh you know velcro adhesive strips you put them on there i put them in the same location on every artwork so every piece of artwork every frame has the same location so i can easily pop one off the wall put a new one on put the other one in storage and we're good to go. So not only is it economically efficient, if you can get discounts, uh, you can buy in bulk, um, wait till something's on sale, order 20 of them. You know, if you're uh, going on a big box online store or something like that, sometimes they will have, even if it's two or three dollars off a frame or something as a discount, you know, if you're buying 10 of them, that saves you 30 bucks. And so it's a, it's a lot of extra money. Um, that you can use for something else. And once you're getting into doing these frames, there's a lot of components to it. You know, there's archival acid-free tape. There is the uh, museum rag mat. And, you know, I use four-ply rag mat. You can go to eight-ply rag mat, and a lot of people sometimes recommend that. Um, for me, it's a little, you know, more expensive than what I'm doing because I have a lot more quantity and bulk of stuff. Um, but you, you add that into it. If you have a multiple cell setup, you want each of those layers separated from each other, including the background. And so there's some frames where I have five or six mats that are separating these different layers and that gets expensive and adds up. So being able to buy the mats in bulk is also a huge advantage. So um, that is something, you know, in the frame, sometimes you're not able to get as steep of discounts, but definitely when you're buying from, uh, you know, the, the mat suppliers, um, you know, there's some online services, you can find some local um, services. I'm sure if you go to a local mat shop, um, they'd be more than happy to set up the same sort of a, uh, uh, to uh, uh, size dimensions and just cut multiple of those at once. It's going to be nicer for them. They might give you a discount, but online for sure, if you order one of them, it's going to be a certain price. If you order five, 10, then they do in the increments and it goes up to 20, 100, et cetera. And so I try to order in bulk so that I can have those uh, for that reason. Um, so again, 13 by 19 might be a weird size, but I use that for everything else. And so I'm able to interchange them out. 
I don't think they look bad. I think they look nice at that size. It's a little bit um, different of a framing. I like the way they sit on the wall, but I'm able to switch them in and out. Same thing for 16 filled cells. You're not going to be able to use the 13 by 19 frame probably, or it's going to look a little different. So I, I buy a different set of frames, but it's the same frame for every 16 uh, or 16 filled cell. And I sometimes will have to get a thicker uh, uh, frame, um, so a deeper frame, uh, you know, like a shadow box, because I have so many layers in a particular cell setup or it has a key master. And so in that regard, you're able to buy the, the thicker shadow box frame, but the same dimensions of frame. I put the, the Velcro strips in the same spot on the frame. And so that way you can make sure that you can interchange them uh, very easily on and off the wall. And you can store them again horizontally if you want to. I still store them vertically um, in, in the different cases that I have here. Um, but you can store them horizontally if that's a concern or you have a system where it's more of a drawer basis and you can put a couple on there. Almost like a architectural drawer system. Maybe you store them in that way. Uh, but make sure you're not stacking things on top of each other and things of that nature. Um, the other thing I didn't mention, you know, we have the museum quality tape, you have the rag mat, which if you're looking at mats and things of that nature or archival stuff, sometimes you'll see acid free. And, you know, I'm not a, a mat expert, but I know that the research that I've done in the, uh, in the uh, framing companies that I've talked to, they say you want to get um, rag mat. Um, and that's, I think it's 100% cotton or it's, you know, I, I don't know exactly what, it's made out of magic and sunshine. It, essentially, it's one of the truest forms of acid free and it doesn't have um, any acid in it, where some of the acid free still have some chemicals and products in it that can deteriorate um, your artwork, your cells and things of that nature. Um, so I always get rag mat. Again, eight ply sometimes is recommended. I get four ply just because I buy in such quantity and I have a whole lot of stuff to deal with. Um, and I think four suffices. And it's much better than finding the moldy box and, and the storage unit that you bought or something like that. So uh, you have those components. You have the, uh, the museum quality tape, you have the rag mat, you have the frame itself. Uh, the backing, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll just get blank rag mat backing that I put on it. And then uh, finally, the the acrylic that's on the front. Now, a lot of people, when they buy frames, they buy glass frames. I hate glass frames. If they break, they can damage your artwork. They can cut things. They get glass all over the floor. I like acrylic. Um, agree or disagree, that's what I like. That's what I recommend. Um, but I also get the UV uh, resistant acrylic that has protective layers to prevent from UV light. Now, even if you get the UV acrylic, you don't want to put this directly in sunlight. You never want to put any of these directly in sunlight. But if it's going to be in a room, there is light within the room, even you know as, as minimal as it might be, the UV uh, filters will help protect that. So I recommend those. Those are more pricey because you're, you're paying for the frame. Now you're replacing it with that acrylic. You're adding all the mats, you're doing all that stuff. So it can, and that's on top of the price of the print itself. So you bought this $100 print and you thought, oh, how nice. And then you spent $100 on framing. Um, and, and that's just kind of the name of the game. That's why these little bulk discounts and things are going to be nice. So the UV acrylic is, is nice. I use those in all of the animation cells, so all the painted cells. I rarely use them on the drawings because those are a little less expensive. Not that they can't get damaged. I usually don't have those out prominently displayed where it could have more direct sunlight. And so I don't think there's gonna be as much of a, a problem with that. I still use the rag mat, but the UV I don't think is as important. I do have some drawings, some concept art, um, uh, some collections of drawings. Uh, I can show you in another video, but like, you know, I have a Disney one where it's got eight uh, character setups. Uh, and so that one is a, in a larger frame and I bought a UV protector there because it is again out more where UV might be present. Uh, this particular room, no light gets in. I got blackout on the windows, nothing's coming in. So there's a few things that I do with every uh, frame that I do. Um, so, you know, you have to look at uh, the item that you're actually going to be framing. You know, this is a drawing as an example, and it's uh, probably not worth as as much as some of my higher end pieces. Um, but when you're, when you're framing something that's not as expensive or not as valuable, if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks or something like that, do you really want it in a four or $500 frame um, with a bunch of extras on it? Maybe not, you know, um, if it's an important piece to you and it, it makes you feel good, yeah, you wanna protect it. But for me, the biggest thing is trying to make sure that I'm, you know, correspondingly putting a value on the item and how well I protect it or the amount of money I spend on protecting it. So this one is in a 13 by 19 frame. I like to order the same size frame for multiple things so that I can buy things in bulk. Um, I can get the same sizes and not only that, so that they're interchangeable. And you might be wondering, uh, you know, like, uh, how do I keep track of all this? Well, you know, I, I, I have a very good inventory of the things that I have, but also one of the uh, things that I do uh, quite frequently on, on most of my pieces, or if not all, um, is I put a little sticker in the corner here that I just um, custom uh, uh, print. Um, and this is, it's, you know, 12 field. 
uh, cell uh, or a 12 field uh, paper. Uh, it's one drawing and there's four pi museum rag mat. And so from that, I know immediately what's within this frame. Now for a drawing, typically there's gonna be one drawing, but for cell setups, it might be sometimes be hard to see how many cells are actually included in it. Is it, you know, three different cells that are in that particular setup? Is it one cell? It might be hard It might be hard to see that initially. And so here I know there's one drawing, I know the size of it. Um, sometimes you'll frame things down. I have a few things that are on 12 uh, field cell um, celluloid, but uh, I, I've not, I've not shown as much of it because it's a smaller figure and I wanna, I wanna just emphasize something or I wanna put some titling uh, next to the artwork and so I have it more cropped. And so um, you might not see immediately what is within the frame. So here we know it's a 12 field, um, it's one drawing and then I put here that there's four ply museum rag mat. Um, now you'll notice that there's cardboard on the back here and on the front, um, this uh, ac uh, acrylic that's on the front is not UV protected. And I've mentioned that before that sometimes with the UV protection, I, I put that on things that are worth a little bit more money and not as much the drawings, especially if the drawings are not gonna see anywhere close to daylight, much less direct daylight. So I did put this on the back here and, and that's pretty much to um, uh, ensure that there's a little bit of padding uh, when you're closing these uh, you know, cheaper frames and you're using these little tabs here. Um, I wanna make sure that there's a little bulk there so it's padded a little bit. Um, but right on the back, I said that we have um, rag mat and that's what we use here. And so we actually have a rag mat batting, uh, backing um, and then we have uh, a rag mat um, that we have this tape to. This is acid free tape. Uh, tape to the uh, the rag mat, and then we have uh, a rag mat batting, backing, okay, batting. I don't know why it comes out that way. A backing as well, and so uh, this is um, uh, this is something that is framed in this particular way. And you'll notice also, possibly, it's hard to see on camera that we have uh, Velcro strips that are in the corners here, and they'll be a little bit visible on the next frame I show you. But the reason I do uh, these is if you have two frames of the exact size. One, they're the exact size, and so they match up. So if you're hanging these on the wall, I could easily take off uh, you know, the drawing and put up this piece very quickly. And one of the things I do for cost efficiency, because you know, Velcro strips are not necessarily uh, always that cheap, um, uh, I, I try to reuse them as much as possible, especially when I'm uh, moving out things and, and switching out displays. So this piece, uh, you'll be able to see a little bit better because I haven't taken off the strips on the back. Um, again, in the corner, I put things that are here. It's only one cell, it's four ply, and I also have the UV acrylic uh, at one tenth of an inch. And so I put that there so I know for sure that it has it. And you'll see that I have the Velcro strips uh, still aligned here. Now on these, um, I, I left on the uh, the other side of them because uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to mount this to a wall in a new spot or if I'll switch them out. So if I'm going to use this as something that I rotate out in my collection, I will take those off. So now I have a full set of Velcro strips that I can use in another project. Um, I usually use some sort of a, a measurement system. I just have a notepad actually, as I use as a little jig to, to know where to put these. And so I mount uh, the Velcro strip to the very top, flush with the edge, and then I make sure the bottom of this line uh, of strip here uh, lines up with the, the the bit of that notepad so I can see exactly where to put them. So when I'm putting on the Velcro ships flush with the top, I set this here, I set that there, I set that there. Now this is ready to be mounted on the wall in the exact same spot that this other uh, frame is mounted. So I can easily just pop this off the wall, pop this new one back on, store this one, and this one's ready to go to be rotated back into the collection at a future date. All right, so when it comes to framing, you're going to have setups that will have multiple cells or single cells or single drawings. So uh, this particular setup I've disassembled from the frame and we're gonna show you how we step-by-step step put it into the frame and, and what uh, the layers are and how uh, those operate. Uh, so once again, I, I try to use the same uh, size of frames as the 13 by 19, kind of a weird size, but I have a lot of 13 by 19 prints and so it works out really well for me. A different size might work for you. I typically will replace um, the UV or uh, the acrylic on the front of these frames, the cheaper frames, with a heavier uh, one tenth inch acrylic. And so I'm putting that in there at first. And what the goal is with cells, um, drawings, etc., especially cells, is to not have anything touching the cells, either the front 
or the back. And so that's why we use different mats uh, to try to put those down. Now, uh, this particular mat, um, I, I've disassembled this, and so I've already gone through the setup of taping everything. Uh, so you can see that there is a, you know, just a little uh, figure on the front. It's actually uh, Stimpy's closed eyes from this Ren and Stimpy cell. So this is the front cell. So you have the UV uh, protected acrylic. Then you have a mat. And on this mat, I have taped uh, this particular cell. Now, what I try to do, and there's different uh, views on this um, as far as if you're living in certain climates that um, have cold and heat and cold and heat or humidity, um, that you don't want to tape this very tight. And I agree with that. Some people even go as far as say you don't want to tape it on multiple sides. Um, I, I try to make sure that I, I tape them down. And this is, again, this is at your own risk. Do it. But what I found to be a good way to do this is to tape it um, with very small pieces of tape on most sides, but not do it tight. I don't pull and try to make sure there's a tight connection, uh, but I do tape on multiple sides. One, so it kind of uh, prevents it from rippling and prevents it from shifting. Uh, if this tape uh, gives out, which is this archival tape, so it's not a uh, very strong adhesive or anything like that. Um, it's acid free. And so it, it doesn't hold, it doesn't have the grip as like duct tape or, you know, super glue or something like that. And so I try to use more pieces of the tape, uh, not very tight in hopes that if some of these come off, which you can see, I, I even had at the beginning here to press these down um, because they were sort of lifting up a little bit. Um, and so I, I, I don't have much fear that uh, this is going to damage anything as far as warping or, or cracking or tearing. So acrylic, rag mat cell and it's going to continue that way this has multiple uh this has three different cells here and so we're also going to then put this next which you know has his eyes without eyelids on them so on top of this cell we're putting a mat and on top of that mat we're then adding another cell so these cells are not touching each other the front cell is not touching the glass the back cell is not touching the background that's the goal. And we're going to take this final cell here and we're going to put this down, which it's really cool. I'm, I'll show you this again. So, I mean, the crisp lines, I mean, I, I think this is so great with animation, how, how awesome that image looks. And on the back, it's just kind of a, a hot mess of, of paint and all sorts of, of goodness. So once again, Mat on top of cell, cell on top of mat. Uh, you can see I put less tape on this one. Um, this one didn't have as much rippling and I was almost trying to not straighten the other one, but again, secure it in a way that it didn't uh, get more damaged or more rippled or, or create any sort of issues there. And then um, even though I don't have an original background, I don't have a production used um, original colored background, this is just a reproduction, I, I'm still putting the mat on the back and then putting this. Now it might be overkill and you might say, well, on the back of it, you really don't need to be putting um, a, um, a, a rag mat quality backing on it. And the only reason I do this is because I, I like to have a little bit, one consistency, that's a, a bad of mine, uh, but two, um, because the cells I think are getting more valuable and they're more sought after, I think if someone uh, comes and they see the back of this and it has cardboard on it, they might not think that the other uh, items within the frame are archive quality or acid free quality. And so this is a very small expense just to make sure everything's consistent. I'm just going to hold this uh, together here. Again, you can see in the corner that I, I put the little sticker that says what it is. This says three cells set up. And so I know right away by looking at this, that there's three cells an original background. That means that there's going to be X number of mats. I can calculate that uh, pretty quickly. So here's the full setup, how it looks. Um, there is sort of like a, a, a it's sort of a 3D effect because of the different layers of things. So uh, that's kind of cool when you separate things out as well. Um, so then what I would do is just close up these backings and then uh, put on the Velcro um, in those positions so I can switch them out. So when you're looking at types of frames, it really depends on what you want to spend. You can spend a whole heck of a lot of money on frames. Um, I tend, I, I like black frames. They go with a lot of stuff. Uh, they're kind of interchangeable. They fit the style of my furniture and all that sort of stuff. Um, I have one frame for a particular uh, concept art piece, uh, or it's from a movie where they kind of had some old barns it's on a farm setting. And so I got some like barn wood frame because I think that fits very nicely with it. Uh, but beyond that, I, I like the black frames and I buy the economy frames because all of the meat of the frame, everything that's hold within the frame 
is expensive. And then the outside border is just to hold it all together. And as long as you're able to hold it together, that frame is going to hold up and be sturdy enough. I have no problem with using an economy frame. If a frame drops off the wall and hits the floor from a high height, it's probably going to break regardless. There's probably going to be some damage. And so I, I don't have any problems with using an economy frame. And, and I think that it allows you to spend more money. If I had to choose between a really nice frame, but no UV protection, a really nice frame, but no rag mat, a really nice frame, but I'm going to use scotch tape. No offense, scotch tape, any kind of tape, but you know, a tape that is not archival. Um, I just I think it's well worth the money to spend it on the extras than it is to spend on a frame that's really, really ornate and nice. Now, if you have some key signature pieces in your collection, if you have some stuff that you have to display this a certain way, it has to be just it's got to have prominence in your house. It's got to be, you know, the center of the room. Maybe you want to spend extra money on that frame. But I also like that ability to interchange things. I'm not a design guy, so every room in my house doesn't have a, a certain feng shui, and it also doesn't have a certain, you know, ambiance and, you know, a motif to it. And so I'm not as worried about it fitting in uh, very nicely, but I found that black fits in with everything that I have because I buy all the furniture in black and all that kind of stuff. So it works well for me. But you can spend as much or as little money as you want. I would strongly suggest not neglecting the archival elements in lieu of having a, a nice frame. You know, don't 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 expend the funds on a nice frame and then ruin the artwork inside of it um, because of of a lack of a planning or preparation or uh, usage of proper materials. So uh, that's kind of an overview of uh, the things that I think are important when framing and sizing and storage. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of other elements that are involved with it. As you get going along, you're going to find things uh, that you like or dislike, um, things that you think are important or not important, and you're going to learn tips and tricks along the way. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be things that you do now that you're like, I wish I would have did this differently. I had all of these things framed, but I, I didn't have any UV glass. I went through and I replaced them all um, over the course of a weekend. I said, I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to purchase this, and then from then on out, I always purchase UV uh, materials for those particular prints. Well, I hope this video has been informative for you. I hope that you have learned a couple of things that you might not have known before. Um, this is a do it your own risk sort of thing though. Remember, I'm not an expert. This is a, it's not a do as I say, uh, not as I do sort of thing. Um, I do this. So the things that I've talked about in this video, I frame things a certain way. I use certain materials. This is the way I'm doing it. If you think I'm doing it wrong, feel free to comment. Let me know and say, you're destroying all your prints. What are you doing? You madman. I'd be happy to learn a little bit more and try to do things. But again, a lot of collectors who are starting out or are getting involved or doing things in a certain quantity are not doing the high end five, 10, 20, $50,000 a piece pieces. Um, they're working on a budget. They're working with time restrictions, they're working with material restrictions, they're working with space restrictions. And so if you're working under those particular set of scenarios, I think some of the things we talked about today will help you um, ensure your collection stays safe or as safe as possible in your scenario, um, that you have the ability to switch things out and enjoy your artwork and not just stick them in a closet, um, and that you're going to be possibly able to resell those things in the future um, because you preserve them and you haven't let them deteriorate. So hopefully it's been helpful. Feel free to comment, ask any questions. I'd love to hear from you. How do you store your collections? Do you have any tips or tricks? And we'll see you next time on Pop Art Hunter. <music>